I thought of myself as a caring, loving, passionate person and successful. I really am starting to believe that that is really who I am. Thank you for being vulnerable here. Do you care to share a bit about what you wrote? Sure. So I used your thought experiment, what I might think of someone who joined this program, which means an impression I have of the people I've met and uh, my own thoughts. So I think a person who joined this program has reached a point of intense unhappiness around alcohol. That person has taken personal responsibility to make a change. That person is willing to face a challenge. That person cares about his or her impact on those in their life. And that person cares about their health and quality of life. All pretty positive. So is that person you, Scott? Yes. <laughs> yes. How's it feel? That's nice. Both a little um, warmth rising up through my chest and my face. So thank you for saying that. Wow. Kind of a breakthrough moment. The start. Mm. Mm -hmm. Brenda, do you care to share yours? Yes. Um, I, I see a person that as many times as I've tried and failed to quit drinking, I'm, I'm not a person that gives up. When I was working full time, I never gave up. If someone expected something of me, I kept going. And with this program, I'm going to keep going. Um, it, it's, I feel like I have accountability by being here. I used to suit up, show up, and be very inconsistent and fuzzy. And I can now do all of that and be alert and awake and have clarity in what I see. So I... I really feel that um, being accountable um, is has made me just dedicated to this program. Um, and that's the kind of person I am. Yes. So what I'm hearing is outside of your relationship with alcohol, you were you're a person who was tenacious and dedicated and had grit and commitment and follow through. Yes. Except for when it came to alcohol. Yes. And now with what you're learning, with the community, with the connection, the accountability, the education, it sounds like, tell me if I'm getting this right, that you're able to take all of those qualities which served you in the other areas of life and finally align them in your journey to release alcohol. It's so refreshing. Um, because it's still there and I still have a long way to go. It's going to take a while, but I can, I can physically and mentally feel them coming back. And that creates enough excitement in me to just want to be here. Yeah. And, um, I want to enjoy my life. I, I, there's such a stigma with alcoholism and, I never enjoyed that, and that would keep me from being vulnerable because I always had to hide it and make everything look like it was okay. Um, I don't have to do that anymore. Sometimes everything isn't okay. Yeah. But I'll get through it without alcohol. Without alcohol, yes. Enough of alcohol telling us what we're capable of handling. Exactly. Right? Yes. Oh, Brent, yeah, Brenda, I know in other areas you're you're committed and dedicated and productive and all that, but come on, girl, you know it's too much. You need me. You need oh. me to get through life, Brenda. I mean, imagine having a friend like that, guys. Who would tell that friend to go blow? <laughs> <laughs> That's off, buddy. You don't get to tell me what I can do, how capable I am, but we let alcohol do that. But it does. I totally let alcohol do that. I would, um, I became, from being an extrovert, I truly became an introvert mm -hmm. because of alcohol. I isolated and I lost my, I lost my whole self. Mm -hmm. You started to believe the lies that alcohol told you about you. I did. I did. And I didn't know if there was a way out for a while, but like I said, I, I don't give up. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't give up. I get to meet you. We all get to meet you. And gosh, you've got so much great living 
ahead of you now. I do. And I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to experience it. I know you are. <laughs> Jennifer, thanks for waiting. Yeah, I was just going to say, we've been talking about beliefs and all these beliefs. And, and I didn't know who I was. I knew who I was becoming. And a lot of those beliefs, I'm, I'm talking about the, the, I was going to say, you know, coming into the program, somebody that's going to choose. My, my adjectives were strong and smart, dedicated people ready to make a real change and that there's something better out there to be healthier and to be courageous for taking that leap of faith to be the person that you really are. And my belief system throughout this whole journey of alcohol has led me to I mean, I'm looking at these words. These aren't me. I'm not I'm not strong. I, I'm dedicated, but I'm not strong. I'm not courageous. I'm I'm scared of everything. But coming into this has opened my eyes with the, you know, why, why, why in my belief system and me talking to these people or who are maybe becoming wanting to be part of this program is, you know, strong, smart, courageous, dedicated. These are all these, these are who I used to be and who I'm becoming again. I'm finding, again, it gives me goosebumps because I'm finding out who I really am without this poison in my body. And it, it feels good knowing that I'm finally taking control of my life. And it's exciting. I just wanted to talk about, we've been talking about beliefs and I'm writing these words thinking, I don't, I don't believe these to be true, but they are, they really are. They absolutely are. I wrote some in the chat and uh, just some of the things that I've heard from you guys. And I encourage you to add to it in the chat. So I've got strong, smart, dedicated, accountable, personal responsibility, personally responsible, tenacious, courageous. Emotion needs to be attached. So if you go through life and again, I had alcohol use disorder that's in my background. And so if I walked around saying, <clears throat> hi, I'm Victoria, I have alcohol use disorder, people might say, oh, well, how much do you drink? <clears throat> well, I don't. I haven't had a drink in years. But you're saying you have alcohol use disorder. Well, yeah, aren't I supposed to say that, right? In this program, I don't tell you what to say about yourself to yourself, right? You create it. It's organic. And so instead of a fixed mindset, I am an alcoholic. That is my identity. When you think about the emotion attached to that, does it get you excited? Does it make you want to chase the life of your dreams? Does it make you feel free? If not, let's try something new. Let's try an I am statement followed by the words that you all just came up with about yourselves, about the program, the, the types of people in this program. So when you write that I am statement, what's it sound like now? Just jot it out. I am. Steve, do you have yours? Yeah, it's very short. That's why I'm done already. I was going to say, he's, he's using a shorthand here. Go for it. I, blessed. I am blessed. Love it. So that's Steve's word. I didn't say, hey, Steve, this is, how, this is what you're going to say. Steve came up with that word. So if Steve's saying, I am blessed. Steve, isn't that something you want more of? More Absolutely. Of Absolutely. We all want that. Right. I would think. And that's why I was going to start writing down a bunch of stuff. And then I thought, no, I can describe it in one word. I am blessed. Yeah. I mean, that's a reason to like get up and get after the day. Whatever that looks like for you, right? That might mean getting after the day, maybe just savoring a cup of coffee without a hangover feeling the warm sunshine, watching the sunrise because you're up and alert and blessed. And so when alcohol comes, comes knocking, because it will, because it's a drug, and 
It's the only drug where society thinks you're the weirdo if you don't use it, right? That's changing. We're all part of that. But when alcohol comes knocking, you now have a choice. You have a choice. What does being blessed mean? It means this, 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 and this to me. All right. You want more of that? Yeah. Can you get it when you drink? No. Would that make it? So is it worth maybe sitting with the craving, talking through it with your, with your colleagues, with your other members, talking about it with your coaches? How about you, Scott? What's your I am? Sorry, I muted that for a second. Um, I took a look at what I've written before and, and I came up with, you know, I'm taking response. I am taking responsibility and accountability for my life and its impact on those around me. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure that that seems pretty different direction than Steve's, but um, that's that's where I, I came up. Mm-hmm. It can lead you there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I only got nine days in, so yeah. Yeah, nine days in, you know, your neurotransmitters are, are, are coming back online. There's a lot of things going on. And it's, again, it's organic. It's where you are right now. And it's enough. It's worth exploring, worth building on. Yeah, taking personal accountability and responsibility, it's not the easiest thing. It's also... Feels good, though. What's that? It does feel good, though. I've always liked... I mean, I've, I've always thought of myself as a responsible person who likes taking care of others. And so I get real satisfaction out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes the alcohol has made me fail in that objective and that um, that doesn't feel good. Right. So I I like taking care of others and the alcohol has impaired my ability to do that. So, Scott, on day nine, has has learning this stuff on on the slides I shared about the way that alcohol attacks the brain. Right. The first couple of drinks, you feel good. Everything's hunky dory. Then. Ah, you know, I was supposed to go home at, in an hour. I didn't, or I said I would do this and I didn't, or right. Does it help you understand? Yeah, I like the science. I mean, I, I've the last several weeks I've been reading and listening about it, and, and I, it it works well with my approach to life. I do um, find it helpful, and, and you know, one of the reasons I'm here is because I just lately my tolerance had gotten so high that I found I was forgetting things and mm-hmm. having gaps. And that's just, I, that's where I got to, I can't do this anymore. And so I'm curious about why that's happening. What, and, and so if I understand better, I can act better. So yes, yes I like exactly. Right. You can recognize that. Okay. The person who did those things that wasn't the real me, I was under the influence of of this substance. It doesn't, it's not a cop out. It's not saying that there are not relationships to be repaired. Certainly not. Yeah. But the first relationship that we establish is with ourselves. With these sorts of exercises, right? I am. What's worth pursuing? Mm -hmm. You clearly value others. You value being a caretaker, a provider for others. That's something worth pursuing. Something you want to learn. Yeah. And so through that process, Scott, you know, when we come in here, look, guys, we don't have a lot of self-esteem. You know how you build a self-esteem is by doing esteemable things. And when we are clear of alcohol, those become a lot easier. Our actions line up with our values again. Our words line up with our actions. I once read a quote that was um, self-esteem or self-respect isn't something you have. It's something you do. Ooh, I like that. Mm. Yeah, it's really good stuff. How about you, Jennifer? Care to share? Yeah, just I, I'm. I thought of myself as a caring, loving, passionate person, uh, and successful. Um, so that's kind of where I drew it. In and, and it's 
I, I really, I'm starting to believe that 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 is really who I am. And I'm not lying to myself anymore. I'm not lying to others unintentionally. I really am that kind and loving person, but I've never been it toward, toward myself. It's always been outwardly. And this is helping me with the, the like-minded people that I get to talk to and know that I'm not alone, thinking all these stories that we discuss with each other, they've done that too. And it's not just me. And I love that feeling of being able to look at myself and start to unpack a lot of this garbage um, and get rid of it and the clutter, get rid of the clutter and, and look at myself as, you know, I really am successful. I really am caring and loving and I can do those things because I was starting to get to the point where I couldn't do this anymore. I, I, I was at my wits end of, you know, I was, I was just, it wasn't, I was so down on myself and just felt terrible. So I, this has been such an eye opener and such a good experience for me. Not every day is great, but it's teaching me to become a better person to myself and not think of it as selfish, but I am the person that I need to be for, you know, for myself first before I can really truly love and care for all this other stuff. And I'm so grateful to be able to, to be able to identify that and get there. 